Coin flipping, coin tossing, or heads or tails is the practice of throwing a coin in the air to choose between two alternatives, sometimes to resolve a dispute between two parties. It is a form of sortition which inherently has only two possible and equally likely outcomes. History The historical origin of coin flipping is the interpretation of a chance outcome as the expression of divine will. Coin flipping as a game was known to the Romans as Navia Aut Caput, as some coins had a ship on one side and the head of the emperor on the other. In England, this game was referred to as cross and pile. The expression heads or tails results from heads and tails being considered opposite body parts. Process during a coin toss, the coin is thrown into the air such that it rotates edge over edge several times, either beforehand or when the coin is in the air, an interested party calls heads or tails, indicating which side of the coin that party is choosing. The other party is assigned the opposite side. Depending on custom, the coin may be caught, caught and inverted, or allowed to land on the ground. When the coin comes to rest, the toss is complete and the party who called or was assigned the face-up side is declared the winner. It is theoretically possible for a coin to land on its edge, either by landing up against an object or by getting stuck in the ground. Angular momentum typically prevents most coins from landing on their edge is unsupported if flipped. Such cases in which a coin does land on its edge are exceptionally rare and in most cases the coin is simply reflipped. The coin may be any type as long as it has two distinct sides. It need not be a circulating coin as such. Larger coins tend to be more popular than smaller ones. Most high-profile coin tosses use custom-made ceremonial medallions. Fraudulent flipping It is not very difficult to learn to flip a coin so as to get a reliable intended result. Not by controlling the number of flips but by creating the illusion that the coin is flipping. The coin remains at a constant inclination to the vertical and simply rotates, or wobbles, about a vertical axis. The inclination must be so efficient for the coin to occupy most of the sphere that a fairly flipped coin would. While not being so great that the coin is likely to bounce when caught, an inclination around 45 degrees is usually satisfactory. Another simple way to cheat is simply to peek at the coin as it lands in your hand. Although it seems that this would be easily detectable, in fact, this can be done quickly and convincingly with some practice. The third common method of fraudulent flipping is to determine which side is up by the feel of the coin. On most USA coins, the head's side is smoother than the tail's side. Three-way three-way coin flips are also possible. By a different process, this can be done either to choose two out of three, or to choose one out of three. To choose two out of three, three coins are flipped, and if two coins come up the same and one different, the different one loses, leaving two players. To choose one out of three, either reverse this, or add a regular two-way coin flip between the remaining players as a second step. Note that the three-way flip is 75% likely to work each time it is tried, and does not require that heads or tails be called. A famous example of such a three-way coin flip is dramatized in Friday Night Lights, where three high school football teams with identical records use a three-way coin flip at a truck stop to determine which two will advance to the playoffs. A legacy of this coin flip was to reduce the use of coin flips to break ties in Texas sports, instead using point systems to reduce the frequency of ties, using dispute resolution. Coin tossing is a simple and unbiased way of settling a dispute or deciding between two or more arbitrary options. In a game theoretic analysis it provides even odds to both sides involved requiring little effort and preventing the dispute from escalating into a struggle. It is used widely in sports and other games to decide arbitrary factors such as which side of the field the team will play from, 
or which side will attack or defend initially, these decisions may tend to favor one side, or may be neutral. Factors such as wind direction, the position of the sun, and other conditions may affect the decision. In team sports it is often the captain who makes the call, while the umpire or referee usually oversees such proceedings. A competitive method may be used instead of a toss in some situations, for example in basketball the jump ball is employed, while the face-off plays a similar role in ice hockey. Coin flipping is used to decide which end of the field the teams will play to and or which team gets first use of the ball. Or similar questions in football matches, American football games, Australian rules football, volleyball, and other sports requiring such decisions. In the U.S., a specially minted coin is flipped in National Football League games. The coin is then sent to the Pro Football Hall of Fame, and other coins of the special series minted at the same time are sold to collectors. The XFL, a short-lived American Football League, attempted to avoid coin tosses by implementing a face-off style opening scramble in which one player from each team tried to recover a loose Football, the team whose player recovered the ball got first choice. Because of the high rate of injury in these events, it has not achieved mainstream popularity in any football league. In coin tossing remains the method of choice in American football. In an association football match, the team winning the coin toss chooses which goal to attack in the first half. The opposing team kicks off for the first half. For the second half the team switch ends, and the team that won the coin toss kicks off. Coin tosses are also used to decide which team has the pick of going first or second in a penalty shootout. Before the introduction of the penalty shootout, coin tosses were occasionally needed to decide the outcome of tied matches. The most famous instance of this was the semi-final game of the 1968 European Championship in Italy between Italy and the Soviet Union, which finished 0-0 after extra time. Italy won, and went on to become European champions. In cricket the toss is often significant, as the decision whether to bat or bowl first can influence the outcome of the game. In duels a coin toss was sometimes used to determine which combatant had the sun at his back. In some other sports, the result of the toss is less crucial and merely a way to fairly choose between two more or less equal options. The National Football League also has a coin toss for tie-breaking among teams for playoff bursts and seeding, but the rules make the need for coin toss, which is random rather than competitive, very unlikely. A similar procedure breaks ties for the purposes of seeding in the NFL draft. These coin tosses are more common, since the tie-breaking procedure for the draft is much less elaborate than the one used for playoff seeding. Major League Baseball once conducted a series of coin flips as a contingency on the last month of its regular season to determine home teams for any potential one-game playoff games that might need to be added to the regular season. Most of these cases did not occur. From the 2009 season, the method to determine home field advantage was changed. Federation International Das Crime Rules use a coin toss to determine the winner of a fencing match that remains tied at the end of a sudden death. Extra minute of competition. Although in most international matches this is now done electronically by the scoring apparatus. In the United States, Sasha Lovejoy and Francis W. Pettigrove, who owned the claim to the land that would later become Portland, Oregon, each wanted to name the new town after their respective hometowns of Boston, Massachusetts and Portland, Maine. Pettigrove won the coin flip. Scientists sometimes use coin flipping to determine the order in which they appear on the list of authors of scholarly papers. Politics Australia In December 2006 Australian television networks 7 and 10, which shared the broadcasting of the 2007 AFL season, decided who would broadcast the grand final with the toss of a coin. Network 10 won. Canada In some jurisdictions, a coin is flipped to decide between two candidates who poll equal number of votes in an election, or two companies tendering equal prices for a project. 
For example, a coin toss decided a city of Toronto tender in 2003 for painting lines on 1,605 kilometers of city streets. The bids were $161,110, $146,584.65, and two equal bids of $111,242.55. Philippines drawing of lots is one of the methods to break ties to determine a winner in an election. The coin flip is considered an acceptable variant. Each candidate will be given five chances to flip a coin. The candidate with the most number of heads wins. The 2013 mayoral election in San Teodoro, Oriental Mindoro was decided on a coin flip, with the winner being proclaimed after the second round when both candidates remain tied in the first round. United Kingdom in the United Kingdom. If a local or national election has resulted in a tie where candidates receive exactly the same number of votes, then the winner can be decided either by drawing straws, lots, coin flip, or drawing a high card in pack of cards. Physics. Experimental and theoretical analysis of coin tossing has shown that the outcome is predictable, to some degree at least, if the initial conditions of the toss are known. Coin tossing may be modeled as a problem in Lagrangian mechanics. The important aspects are the tumbling motion of the coin, the precession of its axis, and whether the coin bounces at the end of its trajectory. The outcome of coin flipping has been studied by Percy Diaconis and his collaborators. They have demonstrated that a mechanical coin flipper which imparts the same initial conditions for every toss has a highly predictable outcome, the face space is fairly regular. Further, in actual flipping, people exhibit slight bias. Coin tossing is fair to two decimals but not to three. That is, typical flips show biases such as 495 or 503. In studying coin flipping, to observe the rotation speed of coin flips, Diaconus first used a strobe light and a coin with one side painted black, the other white so that when the speed of the strobe flash equaled the rotation rate of the coin, it would appear to always show the same side. This proved difficult to use, and rotation rate was more accurately computed by attaching floss to a coin, such that it would wind around the coin. After a flip, one could count rotations by unwinding the floss and then compute rotation rate as flips over airtime. Moreover, their theoretical analysis of the physics of coin tosses predicts a slight bias for a quart coin to be caught the same way up as it was thrown, with a probability of around 0.51, though a subsequent attempt to verify this experimentally gave ambiguous results. Stage magicians and gamblers, with practice, are able to greatly increase this bias whilst still making throws which are visually indistinguishable from normal throws. Since the images on the two sides of actual coins are made of raised metal, the toss is likely to slightly favor one face or the other if the coin is allowed to roll on one edge upon landing. Coin spinning is much more likely to be biased than flipping, and conjurers trim the edges of coins so that when spun they usually land on a particular face counterintuitive properties. Human intuition about conditional probability is often very poor and can give rise to some seemingly surprising observations. For example, if the successive tosses of a coin are recorded as a string of H and T, then for any trial of tosses, it is twice as likely that the triplet TTH will occur before THT than after it. It is three times as likely that THH will precede HHT. Mathematics The mathematical abstraction of the statistics of coin flipping is described by means of the Bernoulli process. A single flip of a coin is a Bernoulli trial. In the study of statistics, coin flipping plays the role of being an introductory example of the complexities of statistics. A commonly treated textbook topic is that of checking if a coin is fair. Coin flipping in telecommunications There is no reliable way to use a true coin flip to settle a dispute between two parties if they cannot both see the coin, for example, over the phone. 
the flipping party could easily lie about the outcome of the toss. In telecommunications and cryptography, the following algorithm can be used. Alice and Bob each choose a random string, L J N N F D U D U D and G F D G D F J K H E R F S F S D, respectively. Alice chooses an outcome for an imaginary coin flip, such as tail. Bob sends Alice his random string, G F D G D F J K H E R F S F S D. Alice immediately computes a cryptographic hash of the string, tail L J N N F D U D U D G F D G D F J K H E R RFSFSD, which is 59D4108D4318383937957E71A4BCACC616D9CBC and sends it to Bob. Alice asks Bob, heads or tails? Bob says, for instance, heads. Alice tells him she's just one, and proves it by showing the string tail l j n n f d u d u g f d g d f j k h e r f s f s d. Bob can check that Alice didn't lie by computing the SHA-1 of the string himself. Furthermore Bob by providing his own randomly generated string guarantees that Alice wasn't able to pre-compute an image pair of tail random string, or head random string, in lotteries. The New Zealand lottery game, Big Wednesday uses a coin toss. If a player matches all six of their numbers, the coin toss will decide whether they win a cash jackpot or a bigger jackpot with luxury prizes. The coin toss is also used in determining the second chance winner's prize, using clarifying feelings. A technique attributed to Sigmund Freud to help in making difficult decisions is to toss a coin not actually to determine the decision, but to clarify the decision maker's feelings. He explained, I did not say you should follow blindly what the coin tells you. What I want you to do is to note what the coin indicates, then look into your own reactions. Ask yourself, am I pleased? Am I disappointed? That will help you to recognize how you really feel about the matter, deep down inside.